Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. A few months ago, Google announced a new tier of Chromebook called Chromebook Plus. And a lot of existing Chromebooks met the minimum specifications for Chromebook Plus and got a few extra features that some of the lower end Chromebooks do not have. And if you want to learn more about Chromebook Plus and whether or not your Chromebook might be one, take a look at the video I did back in October that details all of that. Today we're going to be taking a look at some new features that were just added to the Chromebook Plus tier. And if you have a Chromebook Plus or a Chromebook Plus eligible Chromebook, you will be able to take advantage of those features right away just by making sure your system is up to date. And if you don't yet own a Chromebook Plus, you actually get uh, a pretty good incentive to consider one, which I'll get to in just a second. Now, before we dive into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Google lent us this HP Chromebook Plus 14 for the purposes of this video. I'll be reviewing this Chromebook separately in a future video. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what the new features are of Chromebook Plus equipped computers. I have uh, my mom on a Chromebook now because she doesn't do all that much with her computer beyond web browsing, and it's fine for her, and I don't have to really maintain it at all because it just kind of maintains itself, and Chrome OS I found to be pretty secure. And if you're a more advanced computing person, you do have the option to install Linux apps on here and do all sorts of cool stuff on them. And you can see some of my other Chromebook videos to get a feel for that. Now, the incentive they are offering right now is that if you buy a new Chromebook Plus, you get the Gemini Advanced subscription service for free for a year. Normally, it's 20 bucks a month. And that gets you access to their advanced chatbot here. That's caught up quite a bit, in my opinion, with ChatGPT. It's still not all the way there for the things that I use ChatGPT for, uh, namely summarizing my YouTube videos. This one doesn't do as well with that, but it does very well with data analysis. You can upload very large files and have it chew on those for summarization and other tasks. So it does a lot of things really well that are better than or equivalent to chat GPT. And also as part of that Gemini advanced subscription, you get two terabytes of Google cloud storage for your photos and your Google Docs and all the other stuff that you might store within Google's ecosystem. So it's a pretty good deal, I think, if you are buying a new Chromebook Plus. Unfortunately, current Chromebook Plus owners don't get that. You have to buy a new computer and activate it on the new one. Um, but it is something I think adds a little value here, especially if you need the cloud storage. And the subscription works on all of your devices that are attached to your Google account. So it's not just the Chromebook, it's everything you got. So let's dive into the new Chromebook Plus features. And the first one we're going to look at here is the ability to have your Chromebook help you write using, of course, AI while you have text fields open. So right now I've got my blog open here with a post that I put up the other day. And maybe I need some inspiration for my title here. So I selected my title. And what you'll see here is an option to rewrite. And I have some ways that I can make this more formal. I can have it elaborate. What I could do here is say, give me a better title for SEO purposes. And if I do that, uh, what it will give me are a few options that it thinks are better for SEO. And I can just click replace here and get the whole thing swapped out. You can even do some crazy stuff here like emojify it. So it'll look at what I'm doing here and add uh, some cute emojis to it like the sun, as you can see there. I can also have it uh, look at individual paragraphs or groups of paragraphs. So for example, I could select this whole section of text here, right click and say rephrase, and it will rewrite what I just put together. Uh, or I could go and have it uh, make a shortened version of it as well. So if you are you know, writing something out and need a little efficiency in your workflow, you can have the AI work. And this works on any text field that it encounters. So this is kind of an OS level feature. And this again is only on the Chromebook plus Chromebooks. Now I've got the Photos app open now to take a look at the Magic Editor that has a few more features that have come over from some of Google's Pixel phones. So if I click on Edit here and go to Magic Editor, what I can do is maybe grab these folks here in the background that I want to get rid of, and I can grab my uh, daughter here and maybe move her closer to my other daughter. So as you can see, it was able to select those people just with a click, and then I can click and drag here. 
and if I have my daughter positioned in the spot that I want, I can go to next, and what it will do is move things around and then fill in the background. I have found this to be kind of a hit or miss kind of activity, so it doesn't always get it right. Uh, but for scenes like this, it generally does a good job. And then if you find an image that you're happy with after it does the processing, uh, you can click the checkbox here and get a final version of the image. And they give you a few options to run through to see what one works best. Um, one thing I found with this is that it's an Android app kind of at its heart. So sometimes the trackpad is not all that easy to work with on screen, like when I'm trying to do this maneuver here. So if you have a, a Chromebook with a touch screen, I think this might work a little better. But it's kind of cool. It does some AI generated fills. And I did find complex environments are a little trickier for it, but this kind of stuff, it works out pretty well. Now here's another neat feature they've added to Chromebook Plus. This is called Live Caption. I've seen this before on some of their Pixel devices. And what this will do is it will grab at an OS level the audio running from a web browser like we've got here or from an Android app and will give you a live transcription. Now the way you activate this is you bring your mouse cursor down to the lower right hand corner of the screen and you click on this and you go over to this caption button and what it will do is start transcribing in real time what it's hearing going through the computer's audio system and then you can grab the text, copy it into a document or just monitor it but it also keeps kind of a record of it so you can scroll back as it is doing the captioning. So very useful, especially because it works at an operating system level and therefore will work with just about anything that generates audio that is going through the computer's audio system. And two quick caveats here. Right now it only works in English. It doesn't do any live translation or anything. Additionally, it only will pick up what's coming through the audio system on the output so it won't transcribe what the microphone is picking up. All right, the next feature we're gonna take a look at is the game dashboard. Now, right now I've got an Android game loaded up and this particular Android game is Mario Kart, which requires a touch display to work. Now on Chrome for the longest time now, you could use your trackpad to basically represent the touch display, but it's not ideal uh, as the controls don't feel all that great. And what they now let you do through this game dashboard is actually map your controls to the keyboard. So if I go up here to setup and I go to create first control, I can go ahead here and tap on the left side of the screen. If I click on joystick, what it will do is allow me to use the W, A, S, and D keys to control the game. And now it's all set. I'm going to click on done here. And if I jump back into the game and I hold down my D key here, I will start steering the uh, cart like I would if I had a touch screen. Sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit to get it just right depending on the game, uh, but it does seem to work fairly well here and allows me now to play the game with the keyboard. Unfortunately, I can't map controllers to it, game controllers, but it does, as you can see here, uh, work with the keyboard and it's one way that you can start playing some touch screen games on your Chromebook. Some will work better than others, of course, but it is kind of neat. Now, another feature that is unique to Chromebook Plus is that you can record your gameplay now. So if you have an Android app that is a game, if you click on record game, what it will do is it will start recording the output of the game here onto your Chromebook locally. So now you can capture your footage and upload it to YouTube or something if you want later. And then when you are done with the recording session here, you can just turn it off and then it will tell you where that recording is located. So I can jump in here and just click on the WebM file that it generated and I can just play back uh, the captured video. It is a little on the fuzzy side here, so it looks like it's applying a good amount of compression to the mix, but it's something you couldn't do before inside of Chrome OS. And on a related note, you can make screen captures and turn them into GIF files. So if I go down to the lower right-hand corner of the screen here and select screen capture, uh, what I can do is select a portion of the screen that I want to capture here. And you'll notice too that my uh, image is up here from the camera. And if you click on the gear icon here, you can turn the camera off and on. Uh, but I've got my camera on right now. And what I have the option to do here is record a GIF or I can record a video. But we're going to do the GIF option here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on record GIF. It's going to count down. And what I'm going to do is just load up a little a video file here that I recorded earlier. I'll make my face move around a little bit and then I got to go down here and hit the stop button and that will record the GIF. Now it will put the GIF into the clipboard but also save it 
to your downloads folder. And if I click on it here, you can see that we just made ourselves a little animated GIF file. So pretty cool for sharing some quick instructions or making a little fast animation. And of course, you also have the ability to do what you just saw here as a video file with audio. Now, in my prior video on Chromebook Plus, we looked at these OS level webcam enhancements that work with any application that uses the webcam. So for example, this blur here is being applied by Chrome OS and then fed into the browser for Google Meet. Uh, we also have the ability to do noise cancellation. Uh, the live captioning features work here, again, only for what's coming back at you. Additionally, now they have the ability to generate backgrounds dynamically. So if I go to image and click on create with AI, I'm given a couple of different starting points here that I can use to create my background. So I could say, show me a uh, mountain scene here in shades of purple and click on create. And these will dynamically generate some background images. Unfortunately, you can't get a prompt here and just type in what you want. You can only select the options that they have available for you here, but they're all pretty nice and they will be unique because they are indeed generated dynamically by AI and it will also save the image so you can get at it later. And here you go, there's my background. Now you can also use AI now to generate your wallpaper. It works pretty much the same way as the other backgrounds we just looked at. So for example, I could select Dreamscape here, and once again, I have a very limited set of things to choose from, but let me do a, let me do a boat, uh, and it'll be made out of burlap in uh, yellow and teal. Let's see what we get from there. And if I click on create, again, it's going to do pretty much the same thing we just saw with the other backgrounds, but now I've got myself a burlap boat. And if I select this, it will up res it, and now my burlap boat is my wallpaper. So that'll do it for these new Chromebook Plus features. My favorite by far is the Help Me Write feature, where you can go into any text field, right click, and get some AI assistance with what you are writing. That's pretty useful. And the other ones are pretty cool, but I want more out of them. I want to be able to generate backgrounds with a regular prompt versus having to select pre-baked options, for example. I would really like in the Android game control thing that we looked at earlier to be able to map controls to an actual controller versus just the keyboard. So there are some improvements I think they can make here, but they will be because these keep rolling out constantly. So the good news is that if you have a Chromebook Plus capable device, you just got new features, and they will be doing more as time goes on. I did attend a press event about two weeks ago, and their approach to AI in the operating system is to do more like this, something that's more subtle and useful as opposed to something that is just gee whiz and flashy. So we should be seeing more as time goes on, and I will certainly do an update when new features get dropped. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.